Whose chopper is this? <sighs> Zed's. Who's Zed? <sighs> Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, was my face red when I had to inform all my guests that I was all out of Grey Poupon. Oh, hello there. Didn't see you. Where's Zed's dead? Since you clicked on this video, I'm going to assume that you know who Zed's dead is, but if you don't, that's okay, because by the end of the video, you'll be very well informed. They've been around for a very long time, and they've become a key staple of bass music while still exploring some other genres as well. For the past 14 years, they've been shaping the bass music scene with a very hands-on approach using a diverse array of music, and their influence has been scaled to greater heights since the creation of their record label, Dead Beats. In this video, we're going to unpack the last 15 years of their career, so let's take a trip back in time to where it all started. Zed's Dead is a duo that consists of Toronto native Zachary Raproven, also known as Hooks, and Dylan Mahmoud, also known as DC. Welcome back to Zed's Bread. I'm Hooks. I'm DC, and we're your hosts, Zed's Dead. The nickname Hooks actually comes from Captain Hook. Hooks made up the name when he was 14 as a play on the hook of a song, and fun fact, he even dressed up as Captain Hook for Halloween when he was five. As for DC, his name stands for Dusty Crates, which refers to digging through records for old samples and rare tunes. Hooks has been into graffiti art for a long time, which is actually what led him to crossing paths with DC. Hooks' cousin, who was actually DC's next door neighbor, introduced them in 2004. Uh, my cousin was like his neighbor, and he's actually like our manager and agent now. But, um, you know, we started hanging out like in high school and he made uh, beats like a little bit before me and kind of like inspired me to get into it. And uh, yeah, we've just been making music together since like, we're like, I don't know. It's like over 10 years now, we've been more, more, yeah. almost like 12 years. I mean, we had a group before Zed's Dead and Zed's Dead's, uh, I think it'll turn seven years old. DC's garage was sort of a neighborhood hangout spot and he wanted to get one of the walls painted and he knew that Hooks had started doing graffiti recently so he asked him to paint a mural in the garage. While Hooks was painting the mural, he and DC hit it off and they discovered that they shared a mutual love for hip hop and they both had actually just begun producing music, though DC did start just a little bit before Hooks. In Zed's Dead's Reddit AMA from 2014, DC said that he first experimented with producing music using a PlayStation game called MTV Music Generator. We're secretly replacing DJ Scribble's equipment with the MTV Music Generator. Let's see if he notices. What is this? Where's my stuff? Yep, he notices. Two years later, in 2006, they decided to join forces, branding themselves under the moniker Mass Productions. They only ever released one body of work under that name. It was an album titled Fresh Beats that they dropped in 2007. It was a sample-heavy compilation of hip-hop beats which were mostly influenced by the 90s hip-hop scene. It got them a little bit of traction in their local scene in Toronto, but not really much outside of that. Eventually, they both began to acquire a taste for dance music, which led them to the idea of creating Zed's Dead in 2009. The name references a famous line from the 1994 cult classic movie Pulp Fiction, but it also is a little bit of a reference to their initials Z for Zach and D for Dylan. So Zach, Dylan, welcome at Tomorrowland, Zed's Dead. Who came up with the name of Zed's Dead? Is it true that it's from a quote from Pulp Fiction? Yeah, I guess Bruce Willis kind of came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's from Pulp Fiction. It's not from the initials, from your name. There's a little bit of that too. A, little a, little bit bit of, a bit of both. Whose motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. The same year that they formed Zed's Dead in 2009, they also released their first track as Zed's Dead, which was a remix of Pyramid Song by Radiohead. Zed's dead. Come on. Come on. 
They remixed quite a bit of rock in the early days, such as their remix of Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. And a remix of The Pretender by the Foo Fighters. They also released their first ever original track in 2009, which is called Journey of a Lifetime, and then they actually played their first show at The Social in Toronto that summer. They were gaining a lot more traction under Zed's Dead than they were under Mass Productions, and as they continued to release music, they began to build up a fan base on MySpace. They also co-founded a weekly party called Bass Mentality in 2009 alongside the Kilobits. Bass Mentality first started out in the basement of a Toronto bar called 751, and it was created with the intent of allowing DJs to play free from the restriction of concert promoters. The event was only held at 751 for about a year because of the next summer in 2010, they moved the event to Toronto's Wrong Bar. Bass Mentality existed for four years, and over that time, they hosted major artists like Skrillex, Borgor, and Nero, just to name a few. In 2011, Zed's Dead released a collab alongside Bass Mentality co-founders The Kilobits, and the track was also called Bass Mentality. One year after starting Bass Mentality, they got widespread recognition for their Eyes on Fire remix, which landed on the top iTunes electronic charts, and I personally would consider it to be their breakout track. Scream, who's a famous dubstep DJ from the UK, was the first major artist to take notice of Eyes on Fire, and he played it on his radio show and in his live sets, which just added more fuel to the Red Hot track. All of that recognition got them their first official North American tour in 2010, playing over 40 shows in the US and Canada. They followed up the next year with the Graveyard Tour, this time playing more than 50 shows in North America. To kick off 2012, they released a 4-track EP called Adrenaline, and then in March of 2012, they made their Mad Decent Jeffrey's debut with the release of their Victor EP. The EP featured 7 collaborations with Toronto rapper Omar Lynx, and while the EP is only available on SoundCloud, the track No Prayers did make its way to Spotify in 2021. Just a few months later, they followed up with yet another EP featuring Omar Lynx, the Living Dead EP. They put out a music video for the title track that had Peter Green in it, who is the actor who played Zed in Pulp Fiction, which was a fun easter egg referencing the origin of their name. They even did a full tour with Omar Lynx after the release of the EP. In 2013, they made a return to Mad Decent with their first release of the year, the Hot Sauce EP. DC said that the EP received a ton of backlash since it was a different sound than what fans were used to, but it just reinforced the fact that Zed's Dead does all types of genres and they're only going to put something out if they feel strongly about it. The original artwork for the EP featured a hot sauce bottle that resembled a bottle of Tabasco sauce, so much so that they actually received a cease and desist letter from Tabasco, so they had to swap out the artwork for something a little more generic. By 2014, the Zed's Dead project had been going strong for half a decade, and it was finally time for them to release their debut album. The 8-track album, which was titled Somewhere Else, was released on July 1st and gained instant recognition, charting on the Billboard 200. The final track on the album features Perry Farrell, who is the lead singer of Jane's Addiction, but you may know him better for his wildly successful music festival, Lollapalooza, hence the reason for Perry's stage being named after him. He's He's definitely one of the more intriguing artists that Zed's Dead has collaborated with over the years. Now, before the release of the album, Zed's Dead intentionally leaked the track Lost You through a Craigslist misconnections ad. Anyone who responded to the ad was sent a short clip of the Lost You music video. On July 3rd, 2014, just two days after the album release, they headlined Red Rocks for their first ever Dead Rock show. Colorado has basically become a second home for them, having Dead Rock shows at Red Rocks every year since, with the exception of 2020. Their 10th ever Dead Rocks will take place in the summer of 2024, and they also hold another annual event in Colorado, but we'll get to that in a little bit. In 2015, they teamed up with Billboard to throw their two-night stand tour, which took a unique approach that not many electronic artists had taken at the time. 
The tour took place only in historically significant venues in major North American cities for two nights each, and a portion of the profits went to the rehab clinic called Recovery Unplugged. For the tour stop in Austin, Texas, they put heart rate monitors on four different fans to analyze the results, and what they found was a clear rise in heart rates during key moments in their sets. By this point in their career, they had already accomplished so much, but 2016 was about to be their biggest year yet, and that's for two different reasons. In March of that year, they launched their own record label, which I'm sure most of you are already familiar with, Deadbeats. The label has grown tremendously since then, and has become one of the most coveted bass music labels in the scene, with releases from major artists like Subtronics, Jaws, and Death Packs, just to name a few. Obviously, starting Deadbeats was a major step for them, but that wasn't their only highlight of 2016. That year, they also released their sophomore album, Northern Lights, which featured massive collabs with Nightmare, Pusha T, and Diplo. The collab with Nightmare, which was called Frontlines, was such a hit that it even got its own remix album the following year. After the release of Northern Lights, they set out on their Northern Lights tour. In 2017, they released four singles, including Where the Wild Things Are with Elenium and Lights Go Down with Jaws. Four more singles were released the following year in 2018, including collabs with Ganja White Knight and Snails. Now, eight tracks released over the course of two years was relatively low output for the pace that they had been keeping for previous years, but they had good reason for it. Because 2018 was when Death Pact debuted, and surely they were spending a lot of time getting things ready for Death Pact's launch. Okay, I'm just joking, but it definitely would be a reasonable explanation since they do have some ties to the project whether or not they're actually Death Pact. If you want to learn more about that, I do have a two-part series about Death Pact on my channel, and they're definitely worth checking out if you want to learn more about Zed's Dead's connection to Death Pact. But that's enough about Death Pact, let's get back to Zed's Dead. In 2019, we got five new singles from Zed's Dead, including another collab with Jaws, and collabs with Delta Heavy, Drolo, and Dion Temer, as well as a house track with Funkin' Matt that was released on Spinnin' Records. That was actually Zed's Dead's second release on Spinnin', as the first one came in 2015 when they collaborated with Oliver Heldens on the track You Know. On the 4th of July 2020, they debuted their first annual Deadbeats Backyard Jamboree in Denver, which featured performances from various Deadbeats artists with a whole bunch of other things to do, like play arcade games, graffiti mural painting, and more. They've been doing it every year ever since, with the most recent one taking place this past summer. Like I said before, between Dead Rocks and the Backyard Jamboree, Denver has become a second home for the Deadbeats imprint. Are live on air. Yeah, just uh, give me the lyrics. Let's get the song going. <clears throat> All right, I'm pro. Dead beats backyard jamboree. Rocking with the Dead Beats family. We got three stages and three styles, three ways for you to get wild with the Dead Beats backyard jamboree. On the Dead Beat stage, we got says the truth in blank. Rush, shower, vampa, super rap, pace, and John Santwanski. All right, I lost myself there. On a DMB stage, we got uh, Delta Heavy, Kenny Ken, Camarion Liquid Smoke, Blossom Bensley, and Joel Cruz. I don't. Okay, wait. Back one more time. Back one more time. Come on. Uh, on the altar stage, side, we got Mary Droppings, Noises, Saki, and Pacifics. Yo, this is not working. Let me just get us out there. We got three stages. We got lawn games, food trucks, dunk tank, bouncy castle, merchant art. It's our third annual hot dog eating contest. Biggest one west of the Mississippi. We got donut on a string eating contest. We got a glam station. So you know your boy's looking sexy as all hell. Now can you bring it back so I can get the chorus down and we can call it a day? Dead Beats Backyard Jamboree You know that's where I wanna be With them blah 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 Dead Beats Backyard Jamboree Alright, enough. Enough! 
As far as releases for 2020, they collaborated with Peekaboo and Rez, and in 2021, they collaborated with MKLA and Nightmare, but the biggest part of 2021 came with the release of their newest album, Catching Z's. It stands out among their other work because it's all very relaxing down-tempo music, so it's definitely not what you would normally see them play at a festival. For the album release, they launched a new label called Altered States to focus on ethereal down-tempo music. When they released the album, they put out a 38-minute visual album experience on their YouTube channel, and it's highly worth checking out. It's definitely one of the most immersive ways to experience the album. In 2021, they also released a 10-track compilation called The Lost Tapes Volume 1. Here's what Zed's Dead had to say about it. We've been in the studio a lot this year, and we got the chance to dig through the vaults a bit while working on new music. The Lost Tapes is a collection of old school dubs and misplaced IDs that have never been released until now. Volume 1 is 10 beats that we made sometime during 2008 and 2009, with future volumes to cover other time periods. So far, Volume 1 is the only version of the Lost Tapes that has been released, but I'll definitely be looking forward to hearing the future volumes down the road. Zed's Dead released more heavyweight singles in 2022, like Gassed Up with Subtronics and Ecstasy of the Soul with Grizz, among quite a few others. Even more hits followed this year in 2023, like Criminal with Hamdi and Scared with Peekaboo. But the most interesting track of 2023 has got to be 139, which was released on AC Slater's Night Bass label, and it was Zed's Dead's Night Bass debut. It's definitely not something that I was expecting, but it's also not surprising just given the variety of labels that they've released with over the years. I mean, variety is basically their entire brand if you think about it. A lot of people might classify Zed's Dead as a bass music act, and they certainly lean in that direction, but they've also shown that they can make just about anything. They've been able to express themselves freely without being pigeonholed into a narrow lane. I mean, who else has collaborations with Oliver Heldens, Subtronics, Perry Farrell, and Illinium? The answer is nobody, and that just shows how artistically unique Zed's Dead really is. From their time as mass productions, to the early days of Zed's Dead, up until present day, their focus has always been about making the music that they want to make, and that has paid off tremendously for them. Whatever the future holds for Zed's Dead, we can be sure that it'll be full of surprises. Eiffel Tower dildos. <laughs> it was just like the whole gambit. That was an Eiffel Tower dildo. <laughs> nice.